Today we're going to be talking about how to find average velocity over given intervals based on a position function. This is an example I talked about in one of my weekly live streams recently, which I do every Monday night at 5 o'clock Pacific time, and I thought it would be an example that you would find helpful. So I wanted to make its own video about that and go over in detail how to do these types of problems because average velocity is definitely something that comes up a lot in calculus and it is very closely related to average rate of change, which is kind of a more general form of average velocity. They're very closely related and found very similar ways. So if either of those are something you want to learn a bit more about, be sure to stick around to the end of the video. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. A rock that's thrown upwards on Mars with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Its height in meters, t seconds later, is given by this equation. So basically, this equation that we're given here tells us the height of the rock t seconds after it's thrown. So we know it has an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. That's basically just kind of baked into the problem here. That's not, you know, a, a given piece of information we need to really worry about beyond the fact that that's where this 10t comes from. That's the initial velocity. And basically we know that this function is gonna accurately model this rock's height t seconds later. So for example, if we wanted to find what the height of the rock was at one second, we would be able to just plug in one for t. And that would tell us the height of the rock one second after it was thrown. So what we're gonna have to do in this problem, the problem asks us to find the average velocity over these given intervals. And this is a two part problem. We'll get into part B in just a second here. But part A says we have these, these five different intervals and we need to find the average velocity of the rock over these given five intervals. So before we jump into that, I just want to take a quick second to explain the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Average velocity is always going to be talking about the, the well, I mean, I guess it's in the, in the name, but the average velocity or the average speed that an object is moving over a period of time. So that's a very important distinction. Average velocity is going to be referring to the average over a given duration of time. So you can see in this case here, we've been given these five different time intervals. We want to find the average velocity from one second to two seconds. If we were to measure basically where the rock was at one second, where it is at two seconds, and then find the average velocity between those two measurement points. Same thing here, the average velocity from one second to one and a half seconds, one second to 1.1 second. So there's no like kind of rule or restriction on how long the intervals have to be. You can see in this case, actually, the intervals are getting smaller and smaller. We have a, a one second interval, a half a second interval, a 0.1 second interval, 0 0.01 second, 0 0.001 second. So they can be however short or long you want them to be, but average velocity should always be found over an interval of time. There's always going to be two time data points that you want to consider the beginning and the end of this time interval. And you're, average, you're trying to average out the speed or the velocity that your object is traveling throughout that time period. Okay. Instantaneous velocity is a bit different. Instantaneous velocity is not going to look at the velocity over a period of time, it's going to look at how fast is something moving at one specific split second. Instantaneous means at this one point in time, how fast is the object moving? So instantaneous velocity, you can see in part B here, it does ask about instantaneous velocity. It's asking what, well, we're going to estimate it using this average velocity, but what it's getting at is for us to figure out what is the instantaneous velocity at t equals one. So notice the difference in part A, we're being given two time points, one second and two second, an interval of time to find the average velocity over. Whereas in part B, we're being asked to find the instantaneous velocity at one specific time point. So that's a, a very important difference between instantaneous velocity and average velocity. Average, you're going to be given two input numbers or two, in this case, the input is time. So two time numbers to look at. And with instantaneous velocity or instantaneous speed, you're going to be given just one. So there's just going to be one input number that you're looking at. What's the speed or velocity at that specific point in time? So key difference there. 
Now, really when it comes to actually finding these two things, let's go ahead and start in part A here with the average velocity. How you actually find the average velocity is really pretty straightforward actually. There's just gonna be an average velocity formula that you're gonna use. So the average velocity formula, if you wanna find the average velocity on a given interval, let's just say from A to B, two given numbers that you wanna find the average velocity over, you're just gonna take, you're gonna need, first of all, this is if you have a function that models your position. So if you have a position function, position just means where it is at any given point in time. So in this case, it's called a height function. Height is an example of a position function because it's telling us our height above the ground, where our rock is in relation to the ground. So a position function just tells you where something is in relation to a fixed point. In this case, it's the ground. So we can use this height function as position. So if you have a position function, let's just say this function is y equals f of x. To find the average velocity over a to b, all you have to do is take f of b, so basically just plugging in your second point into your function, minus whatever you get out from plugging in your first point into your function, so f of b minus f of a, over b minus a. So you're just gonna plug in your second point into your position function, plug in your first point into your position function. That'll be the numerator is the difference between those two things. And then the denominator is just the difference between your second point minus your first point. So we're just gonna use this formula now. And what we're gonna do is use this as our position function, y equals 10t minus 1.86t squared. So in this case, we have uh, actually a function f of t instead of f of x. But the, uh, the way you do it is exactly the same. We have y equals 10t minus 1.86t squared. Okay, so this is our position function. And we're trying to find, we'll start with this first one here, the average velocity from t equals 1 to t equals 2. So we're just going to put a is going to be 1 b is going to be 2. So to find the average velocity from 1 to 2 with this position function, we're just going to first, so plugging in 2 into our function, we're going to get 10 times 2 minus 1.86 times 2 squared. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is put this whole thing around parentheses here. So this right here, basically, this whole thing here was just f of b. Okay, then we're going to do minus in, you know, another set of big parentheses here, f of a. So f of a is just plugging in our first point into our position function. So 10 times 1 minus 1.86 times 1 squared. So this is, like I said, this is just f of a. And then on the denominator here, we're gonna have b minus a. So b is just our second, uh, you know, x value or t value in this case, our second edge of the, the interval we're trying to find the average velocity over. So that'll just be two. And then minus a, so minus our first point, two minus one. So it's just gonna be our second point minus our first point is our denominator. And like I said, that's just b minus a, okay? So then you would just have to basically plug this into a calculator. So I'm not going to kind of go through this, solving this step by step. You basically could just plug this into a calculator. I mean, technically you could calculate this all out on your own, but it's kind of long to do that. But in this case, if we were to plug that into a calculator, the average velocity from one to two would be 4.42. Okay. So the other thing we need to consider is units. Keep in mind that our function outputted meters and the input was t seconds. So if our output is meters, our input is seconds. That means our velocity is just going to be meters per second. Your, your units of your velocity is always just going to be the output unit of your original function divided by the input unit of your original function. Average velocity and average rate of change are great and all, but they don't really address the real meat of calculus, which is derivatives. Let's start learning about that. Just go click on that video over there and I'll show you how to find the derivative of a function and we can keep this brain train rolling.